Hello, amazing and very, very Miss Seattle Public School students. My name is Miss Havzala, and today we are going to do some math. So I'm really, really lucky. It's a super special treat for me because my teacher heart, of course, is missing teaching right now. And so I'm excited to get to teach. I'm excited to get to do something new, and I'm excited to get to work with a different grade group. So I usually teach fourth grade. Um, today we're going to do, it's a second slash third grade lesson. Really, it's for anyone, of course. And we're going to read a story, check out how something from that story we can connect to our mathematical practice. So you might already be familiar with the eight mathematical practices. It's just something we either can do or think as we're moving in our math practice, as we are learning about math and engaging ourselves and our, our brains in math, something that we can think of. So we'll see what the connection between our story and those eight practices are. We'll pick one of them. You'll also learn a game. The game is a little bit of an extension from a game you might already know. And we're also going to get to have a math talk, which is something you might be familiar with, but um, two new teachers, maybe for you, so that'll be fun. All right. Hola y bienvenidos a la clase de español. Me llamo Jorge González y enseño español y matemáticas en la Escuela Internacional John Stanford. Como ya ha mencionado la maestra, hoy vamos a aprender que podemos llegar a una misma solución por diferentes caminos. Para ello, vamos a jugar, vamos a leer y vamos a hablar en dos idiomas, español e inglés. Hi, it's Miss Havzala and my partner. Mr. Singh. And we're going to play a game called Odd Pig Out. So Odd Pig Out is an extension of the game Pig, which you might have learned before. It's in one of the videos. And so what you need is for this game, you need two dice. And so um, two dice, something to write on. It can be a piece of scratch paper, notebook paper, whiteboard, anything that you want. In this game, we're going to take turns rolling both dice. Once I roll them, I multiply the numbers that I see together. And whatever answer I get, the product. So the answer when I multiply is called the product. So whatever product I get, if it is even, I get to keep it. If it is odd, I do not get to keep it. I can roll as many times as I like. It is up to me to decide to end my turn. If I roll an even number, an even product, so the, the product of the two factors, factor times factor equals a product. So if the product is even, I get to keep it. And if I go again, and now I decided, oh, I'm going to go again. I'm going to roll a second time. And the, the answer when I multiply is odd, then not only do I not get those points, I lose the previous ones. So it's up to you, and you'll see in a second when we play, it's up to you to decide, do I want to be risky and keep rolling, or do I want to just bank it and put it in my bank for now? So we'll take turns going back and forth and show you how to play. Okay, so I'll roll first, and I have three times four. So three times four is 12. That's even, so I can stop there if I want. I think I'm going to stop right there. So for my first turn, I have 12 points. Now it's Mr. Singh's turn. I have 3 times 5 equals 15. That's an odd number, so I don't get it. So he doesn't get any points for his turn at all. Back to me. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 is the even number. I'm going to roll again. I'm going to be risky. So right now I can either I have two choices. I can either put a 10 here, bank it and leave it. Then it's Mr. Sang's turn. Or I can decide, you know what? I'm going to be a little risky. I'm going to roll again. Okay. I'm wondering how likely is it that I roll another even product? Let's see. One times five is five. I don't get those points. I don't get the five, and I definitely don't get the 10 from before. Mr. Sang's turn. Four times one is four, which is a even number. I'm going to keep it. Okay, no risky business for this guy. All right. Hey, two times six. I feel really good about this. 12 again. I am ahead of Mr. Sang by a little bit. 
So I feel like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and risk it. I'm going to go again. I really hope I can get an even product. Six times five is 30. Okay, two out of my two rolls and 30 is an even number. So I get to keep it. So I get the 12 from before and this 30, that's 42 points. I can either decide to be risky and roll again, or I can bank 42 points for this turn. You know, why not? I'm going to be risky. I wonder if I'm going to get even or odd. I got another six times five, which is 30. I think at this point I am not going to be risky. I'm just going to take it. So I have 30 plus the previous 30, which is 60, plus the 12. So 60 plus 12 is 72. And you can either decide to keep score a couple different ways. I could just do each turn as its own score, or I can add them as I go. I could say, okay, I had 12 from before plus this 72. That gives me 84. Okay, so now I have 84. Mr. Sang only has four. So let's see what he does. Six times two is 12, which is an even number. Are you gonna be risky? Uh, yes, this time I'll try. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think that he's going to get another even number? I rolled three evens in a row. What do you think is going to happen? Let's find out. Three times six, 18. It's Ooh. also a, an even number. Are you going to be risky? You know? At this point, I do need to be risky. <laughs> I'm far behind. Okay, he's comparing 4 to 84. Mm, he's going to be risky. One times down, and I look. <laughs> he one lost times it all. three is three, which is an odd number. So I lose it all. Lost it all. Um, I wonder do we end up rolling even numbers more, or do we end up rolling odd numbers more? I wonder if that's the case. Um, and we have right here, one times three is an odd number times an odd number gives us an odd number. Um, let's see what happens with my roll. I have three, which is odd, but now three, instead of like Mr. Sang's turn, it was three times one equals three. Now I have three times six, which equals 18, and that's even. So I'm kind of wondering if there is a pattern. Does it matter if the dice are even? Does it matter if the dice are odd? Um, I'm going to just stick with my 18 because I'm curious to see what Mr. Sang does. So I'm adding 18 to this. So 84 plus another 10 is 94. 94 plus another 8 is 102. Okay, let's see what Mr. Sang does. 1 times 4. Hmm, okay. Which is an uh, even number. Even, all right. I'm going to continue rolling. Okay. Six times six, 36. I am gonna go kid and keep that. Okay. So 36 and four, I have 40 points. Okay, 40 added on to his previous four gives him a score of 44. So this is how the game goes and you can decide on what you wanna end on. The first time around, you could see, it didn't take too many turns for me to get to 100. Um, it did take him many turns to pretty much stick at so 102. It took him many turns to stick to 44. Um, so we want to play to 300 the first time. You can always change that. If you want to have a speedier game, it could be a little less. If you want to go a little longer, after you've done 300, you can try it. So thinking about, hmm, how many times have I rolled an even? Do I want to keep risking it? Thinking about... Mm, maybe you decide to do this. Maybe you decide to roll one die and you say, oh, that's two. What are the chances I'm going to get an odd number? If I roll a two first, does it matter what the second die's number is or will it always be even? So those are the kinds of things to think about as you play. So just play it the first time through and then decide on strategy and questions you might want to ask yourselves. All right. Y ahora volvemos a hacer nuestro juego de matemáticas, pero esta vez en español. Para empezar, me gustaría presentaros a un amigo especial que traje desde mi clase. Mi amigo, el perro. Y hoy va a ser mi compañero de aprendizaje. 
Ahora, al igual que las últimas lecciones que probablemente hayas visto o escuchado, también tienes muchas opciones de encontrar un compañero o compañera y conversar en español. Puedes jugar con alguien de tu familia o con algún amigo o amiga. Puedes hablar con tu mascota o puedes elegir un peluche o un juguete o una marioneta como yo he hecho. Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a jugar? Como es nuestro primer día jugando en español, solamente vamos a jugar dos rondas para enseñar cómo funciona el juego. Y luego permitiremos que nuestros amigos y amigas se diviertan en sus casas también. Después de tirar los dados, multiplico los números y cualquier respuesta que obtenga, si es par, como esta, puedo quedarme esos puntos. Pero si es impar, como este, no puedo quedármelos y perdería los puntos anteriores si los hubiese. Podemos tirar los dados tantas veces como deseemos en nuestra ronda. Depende de nosotros decidir si terminamos nuestro turno o continuamos. No te pongas triste si consigues un número impar. Lo importante es jugar y aprender juntos. Venga, amigo perro, tira los dados y mucha suerte. Dos por cuatro igual a ocho. O lo que es lo mismo, cuatro más cuatro igual a ocho. Conseguiste ocho puntos, amigo perro. Buen trabajo. ¿Quieres tirar otra vez? Ok, mi turno. Tres por cinco igual a quince. O lo que es lo mismo, 5 más 5 más 5 igual a 15. No consigo ningún punto, porque el número 15 es un número impar. Tu turno, amigo perro. 3 por 4 igual a 12, o lo que es lo mismo, 4 más 4 más 4 igual a 12. Conseguiste 12 puntos, más 8 de antes igual a 20. Enhorabuena, perro. ¿Pero quieres continuar? ¿Sí o no? Hmm. Mi última ronda. 5 por 4, 20. O lo que es lo mismo, 5 más 5 más 5 más 5 igual a 20. Los dos tenemos 20 ahora. Continúo. No sé qué hacer. Yo creo que me voy a quedar con los 20. Así los dos tenemos 20. Ok, los dos salimos ganando. Buen trabajo, amigo. Hola a todos. Antes de comenzar con esta aventura, me gustaría dar la enhorabuena a todos y todas mis estudiantes que están asumiendo responsabilidad de sí mismos, ya que continúan mejorando su español desde sus casas. Ok, aquí delante de ustedes tenéis la portada del de libro El Chupacabras. Veis que el título está en letras mayúsculas y debajo del título tenéis los autores. También hay ilustraciones de cabras y el chupacabras aquí en el medio. Recordad que las ilustraciones nos pueden contar información de lo que podría pasar en el libro. A continuación vemos una portada interior y otra portada interior con el título y una ilustración de la cabra y otra de las manos del chupacabras. ¿Estáis preparados para comenzar la historia? ¿Sí? Venga, pues vamos allá. Todo esto ocurrió hace mucho tiempo en una granja de cabras. Allí vivía una niña llamada Carla con su padre, un granjero llamado Héctor. A Héctor le gustaban las cabras, pero Carla prefería las bicicletas. Cada mañana, Carla se despertaba con el sol y les preparaba el desayuno a las cabras. Héctor ordeñaba las cabras y cepillaba las cabras, y le cantaba a las cabras también. Todas las cabras estaban gordas y felices. Una noche, Héctor y Carla oyeron un ruido sospechoso. 
Carla pensó que había sido Héctor y Héctor pensó que había sido Carla. A la mañana siguiente, una de las cabras había desaparecido. Carla recorrió toda la granja en busca de la cabra, pero lo que encontró fue una tortita de cabra. ¡Ble! dijo la cabra. Cuando Héctor vio la tortita de cabra, supo lo que había pasado. ¡El chupacabras! dijo Héctor. La leyenda decía que el chupacabras era una bestia aterradora. Pero en realidad el chupacabras era un caballero diminuto. Llevaba corbatín y tomaba chocolate con churros. Por supuesto, de vez en cuando le gustaba chuparse una cabra. Héctor estaba furioso. Y la dama de las flores escuchó el alboroto que venía del camino. ¡Oiga, granjero! dijo la dama de las flores. Debería probar un poquito de polvos mágicos. Eso protegerá a sus hermosas cabras. ¡Pruébelo! ¡Ay, ay, ay! dijo Héctor. Héctor esparció los polvos mágicos sobre cada una de las cabras. ¡Achos! dijo... dijeron las cabras. ¡Salud! dijo Carla. Héctor entregó la bolsa vacía a la dama de las flores. ¿Toda? dijo la dama de las flores. Yo dije un poquito. La tierra comenzó a temblar violentamente. Las cabras se transformaron en gigantes. Las cabras gigantescas empezaron a destruirlo todo y nadie podía detenerlas. De repente, Carla tuvo una idea. ¡Chupacabras! ¡Socorro! gritaba Carla mientras pedaleaba por el bosque. Estaba tan asustada que se cayó de su bicicleta. ¿Qué pasó? dijo el chupacabras. ¡Cabras gigantescas! dijo Carla. Tienes que detenerlas antes de que destruyan el pueblo. Sí, voy a chupar las cabras. Yo soy el chupacabras y eso es lo que hago. Carla y el chupacabras llegaron al pueblo justo a tiempo. Después el chupacabras saltó a la nariz de otro monstruo. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis... Excepto, por supuesto, el chupacabras. Afortunadamente el pueblo no sufrió ningún daño permanente. Héctor tuvo que arreglar todo, pero la dama de las flores lo ayudó. Carla pasó muchos años felices en la granja con su padre y su nueva amiga. Pero de vez en cuando encontraba una tortita de cabra. Por supuesto, nadie se volvió a enojar con el chupacabras y todos vivieron felices para siempre. Incluso las cabras. Y colorín colorado, este cuento se ha acabado. Espero que os haya gustado mucho. Bueno, chicas y chicos, estáis haciendo un trabajo excelente. Y ha llegado el momento de movernos, pero moviéndonos, aprendiendo matemáticas. Para ello vamos a utilizar la tabla del 8 y una mancuerna. Una mancuerna con 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 y 8 pesas. Si no tienes una mancuerna con 8 pesas, puedes utilizar 8 libros pequeñitos. ¿Ok? Vamos a ver cuántas veces soy capaz de levantar las 8 pesas doblando mi brazo. 8 por 1, 8. 8 por 2 veces que van arriba las pesas, 16. 8 por 3, 24. 8 por 4, 32. 8 por 5, 40. 8 por 6, 48. 8 por 7, 56. 8 por 8, 64. 8 por 9, 72. Y 8 por 10, 80. Cambiamos de brazo. 8 por 1, 8. 16. 24. 32. 40. 48. 56. 64. 72. Y 80. Prueba conseguida. Buen trabajo a todos. Today's story is El Chupacabras by Adam Rubin and Crash McCreary.
This all happened a long time ago on a goat farm. There lived a young girl named Carla with her father named Hector. Hector liked goats, but Carla preferred bicycles. Every morning, Carla woke with the sun and prepared breakfast for the goats. Hector would milk the goats, brush the goats, and sing to the goats too. All of the goats were fat and happy. One night, Hector and Carla heard a suspicious sound. <sighs> Carla thought it was Hector, and Hector thought it was Carla. The following morning, one of the goats had disappeared. Carla rode her bicycle across the whole farm to look for the goat. What she found was a goat pancake. Blah, said the goat. When Hector saw the goat pancake, he knew what had happened. El chupacabras, said Hector, the goat sucker. The legend said that the goat sucker was a terrifying beast. But really, the goat sucker was a tiny gentleman. He wore a bow tie and drank chocolate with churros. Of course, once in a while, he liked to suck a goat. Hector was furious. The flower lady heard the racket, heard the racket from the road. Listen, farmer, farmer, said the flower lady. You should try a little magic dust. It will protect your beautiful goats. Try it. Aye, 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 said Hector. Hector sprinkled the magic dust onto each of the goats. Achoo, said the goats. Salud, bless you, said Carla. Hector handed the empty bag to the flower lady. All of it, gasped the flower lady. I said a little. The ground began to shake violently. The goats transformed into giants. The gigantic goats began to destroy everything and nobody could stop them. Suddenly, Carla had an idea. Goat sucker, help, yelled Carla as she pedaled through the forest. She was so scared that she fell from her bicycle. What happened, said El Chupacabras. Gigantic goats, said Carla. You have to stop them before they destroy the town. Yes, I will suck the goats, for I am the goat sucker, and that is what I do. Carla and the goat sucker arrived at the town just in time. The goat sucker leapt onto one of the monsters, onto the nose of one of the monsters. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. All of the creatures were sucked down to size. Fortunately, the town did not suffer any permanent damage. Hector had to fix everything, but the flower lady helped him. Carla spent many happy years on the farm with her father and his new friend. But every so often, she would find a goat pancake. Of course, no one got mad at the goat sucker anymore, and they all lived happily ever after. Including the goats. All right, that's the end of the goat sucker. And so I'll leave it on this page right here. Or sorry, El Chupacabras. And so I'll leave it on this page right here. And I'm thinking about what math practice this connects to. And I'm thinking of math practice number three, which is... Construct viable arguments and critique, construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. And the reason I think that this could kind of connect to thinking about other people's ideas, um, being able to create an explanation for yourself, being able to say, oh, I hear what you're saying. I wonder what I think about that. I'm thinking about your explanation too. Not only my own thoughts and my own reasoning, but I'm thinking about your reasoning as well. And it's leading me to believe maybe there's not just one way to see a problem. Maybe there's not just one solution or one way. So I'm thinking that this story, it's kind of interesting that what was considered the problem, El Chupacabras, was also the solution. And so that was kind of interesting, seeing things from a different perspective and being able to see the terrifying monster was a tiny gentleman. Hello, it is now time for our number talk. And so today our number talk will be me and Senor Gonzalez. Hello, Senor Gonzalez, how are you? I'm good, thanks, how about yourself? I'm doing well, thanks. And so we're going to use our same book, El Chupacabras, and 
Senor, as I was reading this book, I saw a picture and it gave me some ideas. I had some questions after I saw the picture. So I'm going to show you the picture and I have some questions about it that I think maybe you and I could talk about. So it was this image right here, right where I saw all these goats in the tree. And I was wondering how could I count all those goats? And one way is definitely one by one, but mm, I didn't really want to do it one by one because, well, it would take a while for me and I could use that. It's definitely a strategy, but I can use that maybe as a strategy to double check my work. And I was thinking, well, mm, I wonder if I could look at each branch, see how many goats are on the branch and then multiply it by how many branches there are. And so if I look at this first branch, I see one, two, three, and I'm wondering if that will work. What do you think? Do you want to give it a try? Okay, let's try. So this would mean if I think there's three goats on every branch, I would need to skip count by threes. So I could count three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. I could also count the branches and multiply it by three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven branches. Seven times three is 21. Now, I wonder if there's exactly three goats on every branch. If there's less than three goats on every branch, my answer will not be exact. It's an estimate. And my answer would probably be a little bit more than the exact answer. And if there's less, more than three goats on every branch, then my answer wouldn't be quite enough. What kind of questions did you have about this picture, Senor Gonzalez? You could make six groups of three goats plus the other one that is hiding behind your video. I love that you had a different idea for me because that ties into our math practice, which is being able to construct an argument. So an argument doesn't mean we're arguing or disagreeing about something. It just means I think and I'm giving evidence or reasons for why I think. So I'm thinking it would work to count every branch and then multiply it by three because I'm seeing that there's about three goats on every branch. Um, I'm also listening to what Senor Gonzalez says and I'm taking what he says and wondering, what do I think about what he says? Do I agree? Do I understand? Do I uh, disagree? Do I have more questions for him? Maybe what he says I have more questions for. Bueno, ha llegado el momento de despedirme. Muchas gracias a todas y a todos por vuestra atención. Hoy hemos aprendido a construir argumentos posibles y a criticar de forma constructiva el razonamiento de los demás, lo que nos ha ayudado a entender que podemos llegar a la misma solución por diferentes caminos o perspectivas. Exactamente como le pasaba al chupacabras de nuestro cuento, que al principio era el problema, pero al final terminó siendo el qué, la solución. Gracias a todos y nos vemos pronto. Todo va a salir bien. Adiós.